Welcome to another episode of Building a Leadership Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Nikki C., all the way from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Excited about today's guest. But first, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors because without them and their support, we wouldn't be having some amazing guests here sharing their stories and their uh, journey through life into entrepreneurship, becoming authors, speakers, and all of the above. Uh, So let's give it up for Jose Escobar with the Connected Leaders Academy, Julie and Noah with Breathe Capital Planning, and Patrick Rude with the Dirty Little Secret Society. He is the IRS tax wizard. Definitely want to connect with them. You can check them out on our website at www.buildingaleadershipmindset.com. Again, along with our partners, super excited to be venturing on a new journey. Um, So if you want to know a little bit more about that, definitely connect with us and see how we can collaborate. Always looking to build leaders globally and bring leaders to you. So without further ado, um, after failing to win top prize in a speech contest early in her career, Leslie began her journey towards excellence in public speaking. She earned her competent Toastmaster certificate, graduated from the Michigan Speakers Association professional track program, and has spoken to thousands of sales professionals and business owners about how to grow their business using referral marketing. In her coaching practice, guides her clients to find their voice and share their unique story to grow their business. Leslie's unique approach comes from over 30 years spent in corporate environments as a human resource professional. A lifelong learner, she has achieved a number of certificates and holds a master's degree in human resource development. Without further ado, let me bring on our amazing guest, Leslie. How are you? One second. Let's get her on. Hello, Leslie. How Hi, are you? Nikki. I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for accepting the invitation here to Bomb Global, where building a leadership mindset is huge, right? Oh, yeah. um, it's definitely a way of lifestyle, you know, walking through life, really deciding to what are my leadership skills going to be? But this is about you. Thank you so much again for coming on. Wow. What did that first speech contest look like? How did you enter into that? It it was a long time ago, as I said, early in my career, and I belonged to a business and professional women's group. And it was about an hour's drive. So I drove over with several other women from my area And, uh, you know, I thought I would just walk away with that $100 prize and I didn't even place in the top five. I was pretty devastated. Now, lucky, luckily, I had a really excellent mentor in that group and she was super helpful. But I got to tell you, Nikki, it was all I could do not to break down in tears and cry all the way home. And it was because I was in a car full of other women that I didn't do that. But it made me realize that I had a lot to learn and I needed help. So Mm. as you said in my intro, I did some things to make that happen and get myself on the, uh, I'll say, fast track to success. I don't know, but people call it that. I really think it's a step-by-step process and you have to work every day. You make a choice every day. And it's that whole idea of positive persistence. Positive persistence, which, oh my goodness, it's actually my word for 2024. Persistence. How amazing is that? And I'll, you know, touch a little bit on how I decided to um, also take that step into speaking and not place, but had an amazing uh, journey to what you see today. Um, But tell us a little bit about where did you grow up? What was your background, your home environment, your friends, and how did like, all that mold you to who you are today. Well, it's funny you should ask because one of my earliest memories before my my parents lived in the Jackson, Michigan area until I was about four years of age. And then they moved to Grand Rapids and I've been here ever since. All my siblings have moved away. My parents are both now gone. But when I was really young, there was a we lived next door to a church in Jackson and they had a Sunday school program. And I was my I had two older siblings, my parents and my grandmother. And I didn't know many kids my age. So 
I thought took it upon myself to go next door as this Sunday school class let out and introduce myself. Well, the problem was my parents didn't know where I went. So mm -hmm. I kind of got in trouble for that. And I remember standing at that door shaking hands with other kids. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't remember that I got any friends from it. Um, and then we moved to, and so I had a best friend growing up who unfortunately we've lost touch. Um, and I'm married I my daughter lives here near uh, me and um, just really great connections in this area have built uh, people say to me, you know, everybody in town. I'm like, no, I don't know everybody in town, but I've enjoyed living and working in the greater Grand Rapids area. Awesome. So great just compilation of just having something now. I just have to ask, did you uh, get in trouble? Did they find out where you were at? I'm sure they find out. I'm sure they found out. My only memory is standing at that door, shaking hands with kids, and then my dad coming up. So you know, I'm, I don't know. it was all good. And it was literally right around the corner. It wasn't very far away. But I mean, yeah, today, so kids, like if they disappear for more than five minutes, you're freaked out, right? Because awful things happen. And this was, you know, over 50 years ago. I'll just put it that way. Wow. So at what point did you know in your life that you wanted to be a public speaker or even share your message? And what were your messages that you wanted to share? Well, I remember being in an audience of a, my best friend. Her mom was involved in a Bible study group and she was a leader pretty high up in the organization. And I don't remember the name. I think it was a national. It doesn't matter. She was at the podium in a church giving a lecture and I just remember thinking, someday I'm going to be up there. And it wasn't the message. I, I, I'm not a Bible study person. I, I don't want to um, say that incorrectly. But my message is not about Christianity per se. My message is about your self-confidence and stepping into who you are. And I have a desire to work with business leaders who struggle with self-promotion because I know how powerful it can be. And I know that not all of my clients will love getting on stage or getting on camera like I do, because that's like really what is my jam, if you will, but helping them share their story. So just as an aside, Nikki, I went to a networking event last night and happened to see uh, one of my clients that I worked with last fall. And she said to me, she goes, you know, I'm going to be published in a magazine article about my business. And she said, had I not met you and gone through your program, that never would have happened for me. And I'm like, oh, thank you for sharing. That feels so good that I was able to help you. What a testimony. And you weren't even expecting it. You were just going to a networking event. Didn't even know that she was going to be in the room. And let me tell you how divine that is. Um, because if at any point you were thinking, wow, am I making impact? And that's just another confirmation when you can see a former client really thrive. And that's really the goal, right? To get yeah. them from point A to point B, to believe in their story, in their message, whatever they can do, and really find that confidence to really step into that. How beautiful is that? This is what I love to hear, what I love to see, what I love to do myself. So total alignment. Um, in that, but when did Toastmasters start? Because I am actually a Toastmaster as well. Oh, gosh, I was in Toastmasters 25 years ago. It's been a while, probably back, I'm trying to think, early 2000s. I guess that's 24 years ago. <laughs> and, and how did you enjoy that process? What was your favorite uh, segment of the evening? Because we met like three oh. times a month. Um, and tell us a little bit about how that works. Well, the Toastmasters group I belong to met weekly and made some great connections through that. <clears throat> what I appreciated most about my Toastmasters experience was it helped me speak extemporaneously off the cuff, if you will, because I had practiced after that event and learned to deliver a presentation where I could use some notes and I pre-planned it and rehearsed it and rehearsed it. But it was when I was meeting people, for example, at networking events 
in casual conversations, the uh, people encourage you to follow the six foot rule. Like when you're in a grocery store, striking up a conversation with people that are within six feet of you, you never know who you're going to meet. All those ideas. That was terrifying for me. I was like, I don't, I can't do that. I, I don't know. And so Toastmasters really helped me master that because you practice every week responding to a question. Now you also have the opportunity in your competent Toastmaster certificate. Now this may have changed because it's been a while, but there was 10 prepared presentations that I recall. And I enjoyed my experience um, and left the group that, so once you complete that, then there's opportunities to step into leadership and step into district and, and that. And I just, that was not a path I was able to go down. I had a young daughter at the time, a busy career. And so I, I kind of got what I needed, if you will. And then, but I totally, totally recommend Toastmasters. Absolutely. And they're actually nationwide, all over the world, same um, setup. Uh, I actually entered in during COVID, so I never had the live experience of Toastmaster, which I also agree. I got exactly what I needed. I think this was about three years ago. Um, I really haven't touched on it since then. However, I do take the elements and the concepts, right? Because yeah. that's uh, especially that I have clients. So our experiences, I can pay that forward. So it, it's just absolutely amazing. I definitely agree. Just check it out, especially that's probably the lowest type of coaching. Um, but as far as pricing, but such value because it gets you out of those comfort zones. Not only that, you get to connect with amazing individuals that have that um, thing that they're working on, right? Yeah. That, you know, public speaking and kind of getting away of the fears and stopping the ums and, you yeah. know, all those filter words. And what I love about it is you get immediate, immediate feedback right there and then. And yeah. it's just amazing. So thank you so much for sharing that. What challenges or setbacks have you faced and how have they contributed to your growth as a leader? Well, things don't always work out like you planned. So I've been fired from a couple jobs, right? And those were um, experiences that I wouldn't necessarily want to repeat, but I did learn a lot and grew from them and realized that uh, what's the expression when one door closes, another opens. So that those kinds of things and being able to recognize my skill set and what I'm really good at, and then farm out the rest, knowing things that I that don't spend time on things, in my opinion, that you're not going to be good at or are not in your natural talents. What really did that made me convinced of that, Nikki? Maybe you've taken the Strength Finder and the book by Tom Roth, and he tells a story and compares. Um, the quarterback, two quarterbacks, I can't, Joe Montana and the, another young man who, want, who was, wanted to be play football, who's gone on to have a very successful speaking career, Rudy Rudiger. And Rudy's, you know, perseverance to get on that Notre Dame football team when he wasn't a naturally gifted athlete. And we love that. I mean, I applaud him for his hard work and perseverance. And we love that success story. He got to play in one play of one game. And he did, a, I think, a good job, if I recall the movie and the story right. But then compare that with Joe Montana, who's a naturally gifted athlete. And now all Joe's retired, so it might be today, uh, who's uh, Mahomes or the other guys that are in the Super Bowl now. But anyway, <laughs> think about that. What are you really, like, where are your strengths? What are you really good at? And focus in and hone on those. You know, early in my career, and I think this is changing, but I know you probably had a performance review that said, yeah, you're really great at these three things, but you really need to work on these three things because you're not, I'm like, why? Why spend time and energy trying to be, be somebody you're not or have skill? Like, I am not great at detail. Now, I can do it. And when I taught uh, some adjunct faculty courses, I would tell my students, I will read your paper word for word. I will double check sources. I will do those kinds of things, but that's not my gift naturally. It's not my tendency. So knowing I really want to spend the most of my time 
where I can shine. And I think that's true for everybody. And and then you can hire people because there's somebody in this world, probably more than one somebody, that loves to do what you don't. That's their excellence. A hundred thousand percent agree on that. It is so true. We, we're always trying to learn it, trying to do it all ourselves, all at once. And I know when you get started, right, in entrepreneurship, it's pretty hard because, you know, the resources may not be available, but it's something that needs to be in your action plan at some point. Um, because while you're doing it, you're also assessing do I really like this? Do I enjoy this? As a solopreneur for a very long time, I love doing graphics. I love creating content, videos, expression, all of that stuff. But now as a business owner and coaching, do I really, one, have the time to do all that? Two, um, when is when are my clients going to be able to get the best of me, right, if I'm continuing to do that? So I have decided I need to hire a team, uh, but only when the resources came and the growth started coming because it will happen. It's just getting started, right? That kickstart of, hey, how does this, um, how is this going to look like for me? So tell me a little bit about coaching for you. So do you have a coach? Do you oh, yes. advise on coaching? How many coaches do you have and how crucial and instrumental has that been for your growth? Well, I joined a program to help me build my coaching practice. So I have a couple of different coaches that help and they're, they have a couple, there's some methodologies that they work through and that's been super helpful. But before, even before that, I had a coach when I had an HR job at a company. And I remember this, so back, back when we, everything was in person, right? And she came to the, the receptionist said to me, who is that? What does she do for you? She just did not get the concept of <laughs> of a coach and and that resource because i believe coaching draws out from you what is already in you at least a quality coach asks you questions supports you maybe gives you ideas uh different than a therapist different than a counselor and i think that uh, they every they all have their place it just depends on what your need is but if you are a business owner get yourself a coach and yes i can't afford it well you can't afford not to because you're you're it's going to exponentially increase your learning curve i think i agree i definitely agree it de definitely shortens out the time so like just i'm always a walking testimony on everything that we say here because as a realtor that was my first entrepreneurship in 2015 but found out very quickly that I don't like the time constraints. I don't like the the uh, the contracts and getting all that. I'm more of a connector, so I downgraded to a referral agent. So it's okay to try something and know that, okay, this is not for me. And it's okay to step back because throughout life, we have to experience, right? We have to try it. But if we just stand still at all time with no guidance, it, it's just not going to work. And fast forward to 2020, I decided to become a notary and I had a coach. My aunt was actually my mentor. She had been in the business for 15 years. Um, fast forward, I did it for two years. Now I can sit back and coach inspiring notaries who either have a business and then they want to um, expose it because they're, they've been stuck. So different things like that. I could not have done that if I didn't have guidance. And the whole point is to, you're going to coach someone in your business as an owner, whether it's training your, your team, training, you know, your staff, your contractors, whatever it is, you have to have some form of that coaching so that when you're coaching them, they can also build that and coach someone else. So it's a ripple effect. So thank you so much for sharing that. And, you know, even with having a coach, there's still challenges that arise. And how do you maintain a positive and resilient mindset, especially in challenging situations? Well, I have a couple of reminders and one is right above me. I'll just reach up and grab it. So a uh, coach I worked with a year uh, and was certified to deliver her services and then COVID happened and the world fell apart and it didn't, but she um, 
created this the power of I am for leaders and it's basically a cheat sheet if you will of empowering um, affirmations so I am compassionate I'm a great leader I'm decisive I'm secure so speaking those words over ourselves I do also use meditation and breathing techniques so when you're feeling extremely frustrated because there's all all during the day frustrations creep in things don't necessarily go as we plan there's delays and especially when we're working with technology i mean i love technology when it works <laughs> but there's still sometimes <laughs> there could be snafus and so being able to just remind yourself hey it's okay take a step back i use the four part breath breath frequently and i learned as i was sharing this with a group oh probably 18 months ago they were a group of firefighters and one of the gentlemen came up to me afterwards he said do you know that navy seals use that same technique when they prepare for a mission i'm like i had no idea but it's breathing in to the count of four holding that inhale for four exhaling for the count of four and then holding that exhale and it, doing that a few times helps you get focused helps you get centered the other thing i typically always do nikki and i tell all of anybody who asks me when you're presenting whether it's seated or standing keep your feet flat on the floor so you keep your energy grounded where you are Great points. Great points. I was introduced to breathing work in this space as well of networking, because again, you don't know what you don't know. And if you're not in the room, you can't get the tools that you need to move on. So I am like a huge advocate of, again, coaching, again, being in these events, these networking events, no matter what the subject is, I do believe in like aha moments, epiphany, oh, wow, me too, those type of responses. Mm -hmm. But that only happens when you're open to the to, to accepting that, hey, what we've been doing hasn't really been working. What can we shift and change? And it starts with the mindset. Uh, the mindset is huge. We have that inner hater that talks to us and tells us, hey, um, you can't do that. You're out of your mind. And yeah. you have to have those conversations. Has that ever happen through you through your journey where you're like oh am i really doing what i'm supposed to be doing i think i'm going to throw in this how and what brings you back what brings you back well full transparency nikki this is my third time at a, at a building a business and so yeah uh throwing in the towel uh, and and it's, you put we can always find excuses but the excuses are not going to get get us where we need to be. And I've learned that over the years. I can find, I can um, have results or I can have reasons. And I am focused on results. So one of the pieces of work I always do with my clients, and if we're doing a group session, we always start every session with that inner critic and moving it to inner champion. Hmm. And that's work we have to do every day. We talk about some, I have several ideas and ways we do that. And it's work I do every day. Because if I am not focused on moving myself forward, it's really easy to kind of wallow in that self-pity. And ugh, it's no, no help. You might know the founder of Walmart, Sam Walton, looked at everything as an experiment and trial and error. And you've heard the story probably about Einstein, no, um, Edison and the light bulb. And he find, found, I don't know the exact number, but so many ways it wouldn't work. He never, he could like, okay, that's not going to work. And so in, as we look at our businesses and think about what we want to do, or even if you're a, not a business owner, but a leader in business, this didn't work. Try something else. What we want to realize is that little critic in our head is designed to keep us safe. So I encourage saying, thank you. I appreciate you, but here's what I'm going to do anyway and move forward. I love all of that. And this actually applies to every area of our lives, right? Relationships, partnerships, collaborations, anytime when there are two or more involved, we really have to assess uh, that, right? 
because now it's our opinion, their opinion, and then the thoughts come in our head, which are excuses to kind of cop out of, it's just easier, it's safe uh, on this side, right? There's no risk, I can't lose anything for what people, and that that phrase, oh my goodness, it just popped in my head. I have nothing to lose. Yes, we have everything to lose when we don't take actions on our gifts and talents. We're, we're losing more relationships. We're losing more connections. We're losing people that have been waiting for us and they just don't have any tools. And now their gifts um, go away with them. Like that is so huge. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you so much for just giving me that inspiration uh, to state that. And so the last I'll ask you before we go into a break, and then we'll bring you back on um, and tell us how people can get a hold of you is how do you continue to learn and stay ahead of your leadership journey? Well, I love Audible, although I do know that public libraries have a free resource if you're really looking at um, where do you spend money? And I appreciate that. I know Hoopla, I think, but I love listening to inspirational books. One of the books I most, re there's a couple that I always recommend. And one is Atomic Habits by James Clear. And then the other, I just recently became familiar with this author, Greg McGowan, and he wrote Effortless was his second book. And I really enjoyed that. I have not listened or read Essentialism. And then I have several podcasts that I listen to, but one is Ed Milet, and he recommended Big Think Big, I think, by Schwartz, Dr. Schwartz. So I just downloaded that, just got started on that. So I'm always reading, listening, listening to podcasts, uh, surrounding myself with positive people, and especially on social media, joining groups where there's positivity, connecting with people in, who look at things with the glass you know, half full as opposed to half empty mm -hmm. and just being very intentional about who you connect with, who you surround yourself with and what voices you listen to every day. So true. And you can actually manifest those things, right? Those um, environments that you want to be involved in. When I, when I decided to in 2022 to to just pray for community mm -hmm. i said I, I need a community that i can serve and can serve me back well let me tell you um i have been poured with so much community god said is this what you want this is what you have now steward it um in my image and i said yes yes and, and once you say yes to yourself and you decide to include those affirmations right um, I'm just going to read some of mine, just like you read. I am persistent with the intention of building leaders globally. I am authentically building lasting relationships. I am changing the game. I am worthy of all abundance in life. I am creating the path to growth and success. Once you start, and, and mirror work is great for these affirmations as well, right? There's not a mirror in my house that I do not cross at any point in time of the day and say, I am amazing. I am doing amazing things. Great mother, great wife, great uh, leader, right? We have to start adding these things. And I love that you said atomic habits, because these are the little things that if we do them long enough, they're going to be part of our lifestyle, part of our days. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and those tools, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to listen to our sponsor and we will be right back awesome. with Leslie. Hi, my name is Jose Escobar, and I'm the founder and CEO of the Connected Leaders Academy. We're a growing tribe, a community of entrepreneurs all over the world, globally, all across the country, high performers, titans of industry. If you're an entrepreneur and you're looking to grow personally and professionally, scale your influence, develop your skill sets, move the needle in your business, more clients, more money, more profit, the bottom line, and of course, grow your circle and your network like never before, this is where you want to be. Join the Connected Leaders Academy today. We are scaling massively. We want to welcome you in. Check me out on Instagram and on Facebook, the at symbol JASCO25. We look forward to having you join us. Take care.
We are back here with Leslie. You have been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for again, giving us and sharing uh, your heart and your story and your passion for just leadership and um, helping others really uh, get to where they're looking to get to, right? So I do want to ask about uh, the referral marketing. Um, is that what you do? And how does that look like? Well, I was a member of an organization. Um, you've probably heard of Business Network International, BNI, as oh, a yeah. director. And so I did, a, in, that was my opportunity to present to business owners and, and sales professionals that were members of the organization on how to maximize their membership and how to grow their business by word of mouth. So it's very intentional, building those relationships, finding referral partners, so people who serve your same industry but in a different way so that you can build those relationships and it, it's not something that happens overnight if you go to a networking event or or if you do networking in <clears throat> either virtual or in person and expect that it's going to be an overnight thing that's not it's about building relationships and adding value like who can you introduce people to how can you help them i maybe it comes naturally to me, but I'm always listening for what connections people need. So I had a conversation with someone I'm in a Facebook group with and I'm like, oh yeah, I'd like to introduce you. And now I don't know where that conversation is going to go for those two people, but it was a connection. And I think that's what we can do for each other is be in listening, uh, be intentional and just pass along information. It's so key and it's so priceless. Again, something that when you are in a genuine state, authentic state of mind that you want to really see people grow and hit those goals that they're setting, whether there are direct clients or not, if you are in any kind of community or connection and you're having these calls, great example yesterday i had a call from another community and i had a new member in my community that's working on something that she has already established and i'm like oh my goodness i can keep this to myself or i can share them and connect them and see what beautiful things can happen um, when you see people align it's so important to pay attention and to actually build your resource list right because that's really a resource every connection mm -hmm you can connect them to somebody else or they know someone, right? Behind mm -hmm. everyone, there's a network. I truly uh, believe that. Now, and tell us, so what, what is the name of your business and what is it that you do and you offer? So my business is uh, Leslie Fiorenzo Enterprises, LLC, as my business name. <clears throat> you can find me at lesliefiorenzo.coach. If you wanna learn more about, well, you'll, you've heard part of my story, but if you wanna make a connection, um, and I have a fearless speaker blueprint there that you could download. Um, and if you want to have an in-depth conversation, you could book a call there too. Yes. Awesome. Amazing. So what, how is important for you, for people to tell their story? Well, I think it's hugely important that either a leader, if you're a leader in somebody else's business, or if you are an entrepreneur, whether you have a team or a solopreneur, really tapping into your story and why you're doing what you're doing and then the what of it and the how of it but simon simon sinek's book start with why uh, that's another great resource um, but it, it is important when we lose focus because you asked about how do you stay on track how do you keep momentum it's really tapping into that why am i doing what i'm doing why is this important why does this make a difference in the world? Because it does. I believe each and every one of us are here to share our gifts. And you know, you, you've got to, you can't hide, or hide under a bushel basket. I think there's a biblical expression about that that's not coming to me, but you, you've got to let your light shine. And everybody has a light to shine. Absolutely. And we need to stop dimming our own lights yes. um, because it, it's so hard to really see the bigger picture until you take action it once you take action things are going to get so much clearer and just going back 
when I first, the first time I knew I wanted to be a speaker, I joined network marketing because I wanted to hit a rank so that I can hit those stages at those events and those stadiums so that I can just pour into people. Now, I never believed, truly believed that I can make it because one, I didn't do the work because if I really truly believed, I would have did the work. I would have went harder. I would have been more persistent, but it also allowed me to kind of get the courage, get the confidence to say, Hey, you know what? I need to hit a stage, right? I need to speak in front of someone and God placed these individuals in my life, Emilio Roman, who had the first speaking competition that I, that I was a part of. And I knew not one person in that room except my son. And my cousin, okay, two people that I knew very close because he's the one that connected me, right? But that connection would have never happened if I didn't have that desire and I didn't speak it up and someone didn't listen, right? To say, hey, Nikki, what's your story? And I said, I don't have a story. He's like, everyone has a story. So I kind of shared, you know, what I've shared in my book and everything started just falling into place, falling into place. Do you feel that when you was that the moment when you had that first speaking competition that you did not even place that you were going to continue to be persistent no matter what obviously your bio says it but what was that time frame that time gap that you said was it immediately years no it was i would say it was fairly immediate that i started to because again i was i said i was fortunate to have a mentor that encouraged me and shared some and then it was probably maybe a year later that i joined toastmasters i you know it's been a while so i don't really remember but it was shortly after and, and years maybe a uh, exaggeration i'm not certain yeah it's it's so i love seeing these stories when you think you're going in so you get a degree in um human resource development and you're now coaching and helping people share their stories and finding that confidence and Sometimes we're asked when we're younger, what do you want to be when you grow up? And we say it and we feel like we have to commit to that. Like that's the end all be all. And now we're sitting in this amazing thing that we manifested for ourselves, not knowing that we can get out if we are miserable, if we don't enjoy. Um, and now we're just existing in different positions that one is not serving us, two is not serving the people that again are waiting for us, are, are expecting us to uh, really deliver on what our gifts and talents now neither of us know that right mm -hmm. until we take action and figure it out see if this is for you whatever this is yeah. uh, just call someone ask one say i have this idea this passion in my heart that's just tearing me up inside and i don't know how to get started and then you have amazing people like leslie and so many amazing individuals in these communities um that have been here on our podcast and they're ready to serve so i just want to say thank you so much for your insight i hope you guys are taking notes and actually go back and re-listen to this again because leslie has dropped some absolute gems here and what do you want to leave our audience with well I would believe it's what you just said, Nikki, and that is take action. Uh, and if it doesn't work, it's always about reevaluating. So a friend of mine came up with this. You were familiar with smart goals, right? Mm -hmm. And he said smarter. And the ER is evaluate and recommit. So the evaluation piece is, it, is it getting me, is what I'm doing, are the actions I'm taking, is it getting me where I need to be, where I want to go, headed in the right direction? And if it's not, then I evaluate, change a little bit, modify. And maybe it's a 180, but maybe more often than not, it's just a slight tweak. And there are people out there, especially in communities, in virtual communities, that are more than willing to help. If you show up and pay attention and listen and then take action. All too often, we get stuck in that, I'm not, I'm not ready, I'm not, yeah, just get out there and do it. Uh, the Nike mantra, just do it. Yes, just do it. That's it. It's it's as simple as that. I'm all, and I love that you talked earlier, like when we first opened up about it's getting solutions, right? Getting results. We can't stay in that. Um, you mentioned pity party too. You don't want to throw yourself a pity party. If something happens in your life, that's really shifting you. 
outside of your purpose and you know that that's that battle, right? It's really taking the time to dig deep and do the work because this is not easy. It is not easy to really believe in ourselves. And I don't know why that is. You know, I'm not perfect. I still have these challenges sometimes where I wake up and that voice wants to talk to me and I have to tell her not today. today. It's not happening. Um, It's tough. It's really, really tough. And then you see, you know, your, um, your press clippings, what are people saying? Or if they're even saying anything at all, and then you're like thinking that you're not giving impact, but just show up, be persistent, just do it. Thank you so much, Leslie, for your time. Um, And do you have anything going on right now that people need to know about on what you're working on? Mm -hmm. Anything exciting? Well, I'm doing a free workshop the end of the month. So the 29th of February at three o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern Standard Time, about gaining speed or uh, presentation confidence. And of course, I don't have the name right in front of me and I can't think of it conquering the crowd i think something five tech, uh, yeah conquering the crowd unlocking your um stage presence that's not exactly right but it is <laughs> that <laughs> uh, is fine. If, if people are interested uh I'll, i can send you the registration link if you want yes please send me the registration link and i'll make sure that this is on our show notes so that people can uh register so i'll get this up to our um podcast guys and have this all set up but thank you so much for your time for your knowledge for just you know your inspiration for people to really continue to to grow within themselves and for those that are waiting so thank you guys for listening to another episode of building a leadership mindset podcast again i'm your host nikki c have a great day and as i always say make it count bye guys